This is John Muller from the JP Muller Group and I wanted to walk you through the project plan template that we created in Google Sheets. Uh, it allows you to easily collaborate with a team of people without having to purchase expensive project management tools. I think you'll find that the template provides a lot of the functionality that you would need for most um, small to medium sized projects. So let's first start by, start by saying that once you open the, the um, template, you want to first make a copy for yourself. And you do that by doing File and then Make a Copy. And give it a name, My First Project. And save it in whatever folder on Google Drive you want to. We'll hit OK. And it'll open a new tab with that uh, project there. Now once it opens, we're going to want to enable the scripts that make some of the functionality work. What you should know is that um, the scripts are totally visible to you, so you could you know, see exactly what they're doing. They're not doing anything like looking at your accounts or sending emails on your behalf, etc. We do this by going into Tools in the Script Editor. And once that's up, again, you can see all the code here that makes this thing work. We're going to do edit and the current project's triggers. There's no triggers set up. We're going to set up three of them. On open, we'll make it from the spreadsheet and on open. Add a new trigger. We'll do on edit, again from the spreadsheet, whenever we want to call the on edit function. And then on change. So that's down here. Again, from spreadsheet non change. Okay, on open, on edit, on change, on open, on edit, on change, save. Then it's going to want you to authorize the scripts to run. You should note you only have to do this the first time you create a copy. And I'm going to authorize myself and allow that script to run. Okay, I can close this tab now. And back to my first project. What you'll notice uh, right away is that um, there's some hidden columns and hidden rows at the very top and the very left. Do not um, get rid of those rows or columns because what they do is they contain formulas that help the rest of the spreadsheet work. So I could actually show you that row 5 has a bunch of formulas that says leave it hidden. So let's hide that again. Right click over the row do Hydra. Okay. The editable regions that you're going to use are columns I through Q, but not the blue highlighted ones. Those are calculated automatically. I have a number of sample entries here that help you understand some of the functionalities in the, in the template, and you could take a look at them when you have a chance. Um, but when I first start, what I want to do is I want to take columns A through M, all the way down to the bottom here. Again, those are the ones with the white background. Don't include the blue. I'm just going to choose Delete. And I'm going to do the same thing for the duration columns, anything in there. And the complete columns. I have some data there. Notice I have a, uh, a calculation here that uh, I don't want to either, so I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to actually delete that row. It'll make it easier. In fact, if you notice, I had one of my samples was hiding a bunch of rows, so I just unhid them. I'm going to actually then delete this row. Okay. Also note that there's a a note here that was part of the sample, and I could right click over that cell and clear the note. Okay. Now I have a clear spreadsheet to start with. And um, let's, uh, let's enter some things. So let's enter my project, let's say main, and first task. Now, in order to give these project shape or indentation or hierarchical view, we're going to assign certain levels. So we always start with one. And then we're going to make this a subtask, so we'll give the level 2. 
and notice um, it indented it and bolded the parent. I could also give it, let's say, an owner for the task. Let's say Jonathan Muller. Give it a start. So let's say my start is going to be uh, June 1st. And I could give it a duration. So let's say I could give days, and days will ignore weekends. So if I want to give it, let's say, three days, I could literally type the word days. Notice it highlights five days because it doesn't include work on the weekend. Okay? Let's add a few more tasks. Second task, third task, and let's say I want to make those at the same level. And let's make the second task start the next day after the end task ends. And we'll say that is five days. Notice I didn't spell days the same way, and it was smart enough to get the fact that I wanted to say days. Um, and I could also assign it to Jonathan Muller. Let's make this one start at the same time as its second task. And give that two weeks. You could also use months, etc. Now, let's say we want to indent. So sometimes you say, well, the second and third tasks actually are subsets of the first task. What I could do is I could highlight the whole section. And up here under plan, I have some custom functions. One of them is indentation. Indenting means move them to the right or increase the level by one. So I'll do that. And you'll note that it'll change those to level threes and bold the first task because it now is apparent. Further, it actually changes the color of the first task because it's apparent. Now, normally you would have that the start and end be a function of the dates below. I'll show you that a little later, but um, let's outdent this now. Let's put them back to how they were. So go back to make sure I'm highlighting the right ones, and I could be anywhere in the line. I could be highlighting the whole line, etc. And I'm going to do outdent. And that will decrement the level by one. All right. Uh, let's talk about the Gantt chart that we just created for a second. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see it. Zoom back in. Now, the Gantt chart is going to show you the month. It'll show you the week number. The week one would be the first week that, starting on a Monday, the days always start on Monday, that the project, the, the, the minimum date of the task or the project uh, started in if you will. And it shows the default view is here by days and you'll see that it'll highlight it a little differently for um, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, we could edit those and I'll show you that um, a little late later. So the next thing I want to point out is a work breakdown structure. So let me zoom back in a little bit. Notice the WBS will automatically calculate. And it's smart enough to know that when I put, let's say, put another level one task in here, and I'll put a second project on the same plan, that to another task. Notice what it did. It, it made a new second project had to be an increment of the first level task. So it automatically numbered it two, and then 2.1. And similarly, if I now choose, let's say I say, well, that's not correct. I actually want it to be a subtask of the project, my, my first project, the first line item. If I do the indentation here, you'll notice it changed it to 1.4 and 1.4.1. Okay, and that's because it's now a subset of those tasks. I'm going to outdent it again just to show you how it changes that work breakdown structure. Okay. Um, the plan is duration driven, hence the when I entered the days, 
I put uh, duration and it calculated. That doesn't mean you can't override it. You just need to be careful because there are these formulas that copy down. So if you override a formula, but then you make some kind of correction or, or you want to go back to it being duration based or calculating it based on duration, you may need to copy that formula back down like that. So it works. So if, let's say I hard code this date here and I say this is gonna be you know, June 7th for whatever reason. Uh, and then I discover, well, now I want it to actually be calculated. I'll just copy that down again, and I'm okay. All right. Let's talk about, um, I think we already talked about that um, we don't count weekends as work days. Um, that's a setting that in a future um, release, I might uh, make that toggle, toggleable, give you the ability to toggle it on and off. Um, it's best to manage the duration in hours or days, uh, or excuse me, in days or weeks, not hours or months. Okay. We could also have milestone tasks. So let's say we have my milestone, and that's anything that is a zero time frame duration. So if I put zero here, and I'll say it ends when this one ends, let's put a date here. And let's put uh, 617. I'll make that a one week task. Let it all calculate. And now, when I go over to that week or that day in the plan, you'll see that I have a diamond, black diamond, showing that that's a milestone. Okay. I want to point out a couple other things. Uh, notice that um, the dependencies column are automatically displayed. It basically shows you the formula that you used to constrain that task's time frame. So in this case, this is N1. That means if I look in this column, you also see the formula is N1. It's just a really easy way for you to tell how you constrained this task in terms of time frames. In the Gantt chart, I should also point out that you'll see today's date here highlighted in bold with uh, green, so you can quickly go to that point in time. If you want to space between sections, notice I could just insert by highlighting the line, do insert a row above, and you'll note that it'll actually give it kind of a gray background, give you a nice little line break. Um, you can do that also just simply by skipping a line. Notice it doesn't bold this one yet because it doesn't have any children. Once I put a child, then it bolds it. Um, let's talk a little about percent complete. If I I put whatever percent I want, but as soon as I put 100, it's going to mark it as complete or blue in the diagram. You could also do that for milestones. So you'll note that when I do 100 here, it marks my milestone as complete. Next we'll talk about uh, collapsing. A lot of times you want to collapse a section. So I don't want to see all these details. When I do that, however, I want to see um, the minimum and maximum, the total time span or duration for all the subtasks. So to make this interesting, I'm going to make another task here. Another, another task. Make this a subtask. We'll make this start at the same time, and we'll make this two weeks. So in theory, when I roll up this whole section, I should see a start and end date of 617 and ending on 629. So I'm representing this and that. Okay. The way we collapse this section is we highlight anywhere in the row that I want to collapse to, or everything underneath, and I choose Plan and Collapse Section. 
What it's effectively doing is hiding those lines. So you'll notice we have these arrows to unhide them. But then it places a min and max function that finds the minimum value for the start date of all the underlying tasks and the max date of all the underlying tasks. Further, it gives me a dark green bar representing all of those tasks durations. So I could unhide them, and now you'll see that both the lighter green bars equal the bigger green bar. Again, if you ever change the nature of this task, let's say I want to make it a level two and I say that it's really not a parent task. The problem now is that this equation is a min and max. At that point, you would need to highlight these two equations, copy them back up, or copy them down from another row. And uh, give this a duration now. It's duration based and it would calculate again. So you just got to kind of keep that in mind. Similarly, let me undo that. Let me, uh, Collapse it again. Do its calculation. Note that if I were to insert a row after, actually that would work because it's within. I insert a row here. Notice that this equation starts from row 13, but I just inserted row 12. So I might have to edit that or re-collapse re, um, the section if I start manipulating, unhiding, and hiding after I already calculated the min and max. I'm going to delete that row for now. Okay. Let's talk about risks. Let's say in my project review, I want to identify some items as risky. In this risk column, I could mark them as yellow or red. And I'll simply highlight that task. Okay. There's some other uh, preferences that you could customize here. So for one, let's say I want to change my Gantt interval. Let's say I want to see it by a week because this is a large project plan to be for long time. I could go to Preferences here, and I could select a Gantt time interval. I can make each column one day, which is what the default is. I can make it two days, I can make it one week, whatever I want. So I'm going to make it one week. When I go back here, now you'll notice that I only have the days for Mondays, and I have week one, week two, week three, and my Gantt charts are really compressed now. So you could mess around with that and choose what works for you. Let's switch it back to days for a second and show you the second thing. Let's say I want to show a specific date. Let's say I always wanted to start from the current week. What I could do is I could actually put the formula equals now. And the Gantt chart, whenever I open up this sheet, will always show from today on. And when I say today, the Monday of this week that I'm in. I'm on a Tuesday right now, so it's showing me 6-12 as the first day. Okay, and again, it highlights today's date. I could also choose to look starting in the future. I could say, well, let's look from 7.15, or the week that starts 7.15. And notice, that's where the Gantt chart would start. Now we have no tasks that start over there, so we don't see anything. But you can see how I can manipulate the calendar there. If I leave it at nothing, you will always start with from the week of the first task in the plan. Okay. Now, what if I always wanted to start one week before the current date? Then I could put the formula now minus seven, or minus seven days. So whenever I open this, it will start from a week, the prior week. Again, notice it starts from 6, 5, etc. It'll switch it back to blank and show you one other thing that you could configure. Notice 
the hierarchical view here gives you kind of a, a nice visual of how uh, parent tasks relate to subtasks or children tasks. We could um, change that. It's currently indenting by five spaces. I could make it 15 spaces. To me, it doesn't look good, but you know, I wanted to give you that flexibility. Um, right now, it doesn't look bad because you only have two levels, but if you get three, four, five levels deep, it might get difficult to look at. I'm going to change it back to five. Okay. So that's what uh, preferences you could uh, control. One nice thing I wanted to point out, and I didn't code this in, this comes by default with Google Sheets, is commenting. This is what really kind of enhances the collaborative func functionality or powers of Google Sheets. Let's say I want to make a comment. I could right click and choose insert comment here. And this needs to be done today, let's say. And let's say I want to assign that to somebody. I could put John, Start by typing the name. It'll find in my contacts who's there. I'm going to do it to this one. And it'll ask me if I want to sign the task. So this is built in functionality. And it's because that person doesn't have permissions, you can ask if I want to allow them to uh, see and modify this so I could change their permissions, allow them to edit it, etc. And they could come in and they could respond to that. I could respond to it too. So I could insert more comments here or uh, respond to it by just clicking on it. And you get these threaded conversations that really work well. And um, if I forgot the interval or how long it takes, but eventually what will happen after, I say eventually, after a few minutes, is an email will be sent to this person notifying them of this comment that was made in the spreadsheet. I'll give them a link. All permissions have already been set. And they could go in there and uh, reply or respond to the task at hand. So that is um, all the functionality so far. I will continue to enhance this. If you have any ideas, um, reach out to me. Give me your comments. Let me know what you think uh, would be really helpful. I'm trying to strike the right balance between rich functionality, ease of use, and uh, you know, without becoming a you know, full-blown Microsoft project or some kind of project tool like that. If you want that, I mean, it's expensive, but it's really rich with functionality. Again, I think this does most of what um, one would need for most projects. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Thanks.